So my name is Amaury, Amaury Solignac. I am. Um, I'm from uh, Orbital Views. We uh, we just won the the big uh, prize of Laval yesterday night. So uh, night was short, and um, <clears throat> I'll try to make it uh, simple and straight. But uh, just tell me if uh, if I'm getting a bit confused. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, the content that we create as a studio and the, um, the intention, the intent that we have behind this and why we are doing this. And I think it relates quite well to what Christopher was saying. Um, I myself, I'm not from the VR field uh, originally. I'm a psychologist um, as a background. I'm a clinical psychologist and I came to VR because I wanted to use it uh, or try to use it as a psychological uh, tool for uh, teams of people, small teams of people who are isolated and confined. We had to go in this plane that you see uh, with the blue sky as a background. This plane is used to train the astronauts and to create true weightlessness, the same as in space, but for short periods of time, for less than a minute most of the time. 20 seconds, 30 seconds of true weightlessness. And so we did a lot of flights to find the solutions that we were looking for and this was very for me, very uh, exhilarating. It's, it's one of the best experiences, of course, that I had. I was lucky to do many flights because we had to iterate on the solutions that we were looking for, and so uh, a lot of fun. But the intention was to make it available for astronauts. And in the end, we, are, we haven't reached that point yet, but we now have a, fu a functional platform that works in weightlessness and is functional. And so we started doing um, space tourism to support this effort as well. So we took clients on this plane and when they were weightless, truly weightless like an astronaut, instead of seeing the, the cabin of the plane, which is all the windows are closed because otherwise you see the planes going like this, then like this, it's very frightening. So they close the window and you only see the, in the, the inside the cabin of the plane. So instead of this, we gave them the opportunity to float and see Earth from the orbit, for example. Or when they were in lunar gravity, because you can also achieve, um, you can do smaller maneuvers that make, that give you lunar gravity or Mars gravity. So you are inside the plane and when you jump, you jump to this height just by giving a small impulsion like this. And so this astronaut, this is one of the uh, European astronauts, is experiencing a lunar landscape in lunar gravity. And so this is interesting for training as well. So this was the first big project that we had. Then we moved on to um, overview um, and looking for a way, oh sorry, no, first there was this. The plane is good but uh, it's, it's only for a happy few and what if we could uh, try to provide this experience of space of what it feels like to be on the moon for example to anyone. So two years ago at Laval, the first time we exhibited at Laval, we brought a big structure that we built uh, with a harness and a counterweight that's approximately one five sixth of your body weight. And that leaves you with one sixth of your body weight to carry, which is exactly what's happening on the moon. And so with this uh, contraption, you, we, we allow people to jump on the moon. Uh, this is, um, so there's a lot I would like to talk about, but there's not enough time. But this is a way to, uh, to uh, using VR, but VR is a, somehow is just a medium. It could be some, it could be only the sensation of being on the moon that's a start. And why this? Because we, we think, we, we believe that it's important that people know more about space. We are, uh, for now, most of us are stranded on the planet. We, we, we will not be astronauts. I will not be an astronaut, and anyone in the room probably will not be an astronaut. But those people experience things that change their minds because they can see the world differently. And one of the things that is very common uh, in what the astronauts tell about their experience in space is the overview effect. Maybe some of you have heard about this. The overview effect is a psychological phenomenon that happens when you see the Earth from above and from a little farther than on the ground. So we, we start on the ground. This is what's happening every day for you and me. We see the moon, we see the sun, but it's something else to be in orbit of the Earth and see the Earth as an object and the sun somewhere else and the moon somewhere else. And you start to get a bigger picture of the solar system, for example. And that's just the beginning. 
So the overview effect was something that we, w we, we thought we could achieve with VR. And so we brought overview, we created a, a software that's called overview. And it's on Steam, Oculus Store, Viveport, any um, major platform, and it's available for uh, headsets as a, um, a room scale experience. And uh, I will show you some, some uh, um, parts of it as a 360 video, but uh, it's available first as a uh, room scale experience where you can walk into the solar system, for example, or the galaxy. So we start from Earth with overview and from Earth, we zoom out. And this is what's interesting about uh, the process. I will just start the video and leave it in background. Uh. Yeah, I, I don't need, I don't need so. Um, so we, we cut it in chapters. We start with the Earth, then the solar system, then we zoom out, out of the solar system and show some of the things that are in our galaxy, the Milky Way, and then we zoom out again. We see the Milky Way from, from the outside. It's an overview of the Milky Way, and then we zoom out again and go on. This is just the start of the experience with the Earth. I'm going to move to the chapter five. It's a bit, yeah. Sorry. So this is the sun. Yes, we start from the sun. Later in the experience, we start again from the sun after having seen other things, and then we zoom out, and we go to the Milky Way, and from the Milky Way, we keep zooming out until we can see other galaxies in the universe. And then we zoom out, 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 until you can see some, some of the structure of the universe, which is large spaces, empty spaces, and then galaxies and clusters of galaxies. And why this? Why, why trying to show this? Um, a few weeks ago on Netflix, I watched a documentary on Flat Earth Society. I personally don't have anything against those people or the society they support. But I believe this is not the facts that I see every day when I work with the astronauts or when I, when I stumble upon uh, someone who is a, uh, thinks that there is a conspiracy with the moon missions. And yeah, those examples are just examples of creationism, uh, people who believe that the world was created a few thousand years ago when we have evidence of things that are much, much older than that. So there are things, I believe, facts that show us something different. And VR is a very good way to experience things. It's, it's, a, it's like a direct plug to consciousness somehow. And it's, uh, as a content creator, we feel very, and I think that's important, uh, responsible for what we're going to show to people. If we, if we show things that are not fact-based, then why not? You can, of course, you can do uh, fiction, and, and why not? It's very good. But um, interpretation of facts is tricky. And... My belief is that if you show the facts as they are, so for example, where the Earth is in the solar system, and then when the, where the solar system is as we know it with other stars in the galaxy, and where our galaxy is inside another bigger structure, these are facts. This is what we can see from, even from the Earth, looking at the sky, we can see there is this big band of stars. This is the Milky Way. We are inside the Milky Way. If you show these facts, you're not telling people what they need to see, you're just telling them there is something to see and you have to make your own mind about it. But it's a, kind of a reminder for them. This is what's there. Sometimes, most of the times, we forget because there's the blue sky, we forget where we are. And sometimes at night we say, oh, the stars are beautiful, the moon is there. But it's something else to zoom out and get the bigger picture. So this is what's happening there. Um, we, we just left the solar system, and this is the nearest star to our, solar, to our sun. This is the closest star. And it's four light years ago, uh, away, sorry. Four light years away. And it's ago at the same time. Anyway, four light years away means it takes light four years to travel from this star to us. And this is just the beginning of this zoom out. This is really like... I'm going from here to the next chair, 
And at the end of the, of the experience, I will be in Paris, and maybe I will cross the ocean and go in the US. OK, so this is the kind of experience that uh, we think are important to show to people. And why, again, why, why, why showing this? Because as a psychologist, there are two things that I learned when I was doing uh, clinical psychology with people who were disabled or mentally ill. Two things that really helped me, and I think they, they can be transposed. The first thing is that information is always good. If you have someone who has a mental disease, if you don't say it at one point, you're not going anywhere, and the person is not going anywhere if you're trying to help. You can't leave someone delusional without saying at one point, this is delusion, and you need to address it. So information is good. And the other thing, um, is that something is better than, than nothing. And so I would rather, um, for example, lose money doing this kind of content, even if people don't buy it in the end, which is not the case. We were quite happy with the overview. But I would rather spend some energy and do this than do nothing, because I believe there's really something, there's a gap that we need to fill in what people know about uh, those big questions. And this is getting uh, almost philosophical, but where we come from, where we are, and where we're going, this space is telling a lot about this. And we need to get this information straight in the minds of people if we want to have a solid ground uh, to build upon. OK, I don't know how much time I have, but um, OK. Um, maybe about the um, origins of, uh, of this. Uh, maybe some of you have uh, crossed uh, sidewalk astronomers people who go in the street and they put an astronomy device, they put a telescope, for example, in the street, and they allow you to use it. So they have a big instrument with a very good image, for example, and they allow you to see the moon, which is uh, something people most of the time haven't seen. The moon in a telescope is very different from the moon when you look at it with your naked eye. It's full of craters. You can see the shadows of the craters. You can feel it's an object and a ball, a planet. And so this sidewalk astronomy movement is um, um, it's actually very uh, widespread in the world. And it opens the mind of people when they see it for the first time. You can always, you can hear it and you can feel it. People are saying, wow, I didn't know. This is the first time I, OK, I get it. And so this is what we are trying to do in VR with Overview. It's, it's using VR to do the same. This is a nebula. Uh, we're going through a nebula, a nebula formed by uh, the explosion of a star. Ah, I can't tell you the whole story now, <laughs> but you need to see overview for yourself. Now, of course, this is a 360 content, so I can turn around and, uh, and do other things. Okay. Thank you.